So I watched Jurassic World last night. What a piece of shit. That movie sucked the most ass of any film I've watched recently. So after this video, we're gonna shit all over that. But first, let's talk about an objectively better movie starring a way better cast. The character of Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park is one that changed a lot in the jump from the novel to the silver screen. However, I think we can all agree that nobody but Wayne Knight could have played that role. Which is strange because the actor never actually auditioned for the movie. Nice. Gotta go. Knight was offered the role of Nidri personally by Spielberg after the director saw him in exactly one scene of one movie. Which movie? That's Basic Instinct and the scene is the most famous one of all, the one where Sharon Stone is being interrogated, aka the scene that was paused a thousand times. For the eight people watching this who have no idea what I'm talking about, Sharon Stone is being interrogated by a group of men, Knight included, when, without warning, she slowly uncrosses and then recrossing her legs, revealing the fact that she's wearing no underwear. The scene ended up being hugely controversial, most of all with Sharon Stone, who actually slapped the director in the face because she didn't realise how much of her lady garden would be visible on screen. When it came out on video, because obviously it's the days of VHS, and the rumour was swirling around, oh, you can totally see Sharon Stone's vagina in this movie, if you pause it at just this moment. It became known as the scene that was paused a thousand times. And there are actual anecdotal stories from if you rented an older copy of the VHS tape from Blockbuster, there are rumours that you could see visible degradation at that specific point in the film with the amount of times it was paused and rewound. What was it about Knight's performance in Basic Instinct that Spielberg liked? Well, the, according to Knight in a 2013 interview, the director got in contact with him based purely on the strength of his performance in that one scene. And according to the rumour mill, Spielberg watched it, saw Knight turn into a, a sweaty, blubbering mess at the sight of Sharon Stone's vagina, and thought to himself, what if that was a dinosaur? <laughs> what I don't get though is he's thinking, is, is it if the vagina was a dinosaur? Or if Sharon Stone was a dinosaur? But I think he just saw this nervous, sweaty mess of a man and thought, that is a guy who would look amazing getting attacked by a dinosaur. Because he does, you look at me and think, he won't stand a chance. As soon as he comes face to face that dinosaur, he's done, game over. <laughs> he hired a lot of unknown actors, like obviously um, it's Sam Neill who plays Dr. Alan Grant. He was obviously in talks to a higher, like more famous, but he could have think Harrison Ford was in talks for it at the moment. He went, I want to pay, I don't want to detract from the dinosaurs with the star power of the movie. So he intentionally went out of his way to cast a lot of um, uh, lesser known actors, specifically to draw more attention to the dinosaurs. So why's Jeff Goldman in there? Jeff, well, he wasn't that big at the time. I thought he was huge on the fly. Yeah, but like, no one knew him because he spends out that movie wearing stupid makeup. He's gonna be in the next movie, innit? They finally managed to get him oh, back. Yeah. To get him, he's been confirmed for the next movie, yes. Did you ever hear the, dis the, um, the failed one, the Jurassic Park 4, when that was still in the works. It was going to be, they created human dinosaur clones. And there is yeah. concept art of it and it looks horrific. They look like enemies from Gears of War. Why is it always, like Velociraptors, I get it. They're scary and they attack a lot of people, but they're not that great. But they're meant to be really intelligent, that's the idea. But in the Jurassic World, they, I don't know we're gonna talk about this afterwards now. Let's, let's, I've got, oh God, I've got so much, I'm, I hate that movie, it's so shit. Afterwards. Afterwards. Here's one for you. Did you know as well that Knight also claimed that he wanted his character to come back? But he got his face eaten. So here's what happened, right? When they were starting to put in rumours that Jurassic Park 4 was going to be made and then it like died a death and then became Jurassic World, Knight approached Spielberg and said, can I come back in the movie? And his plan was to come back and just dramatically be revealed and he'd walk in with a hook for a hand and an eye patch. And Spielberg went, no one is going to believe that you survived that dinosaur attack. And Knight said, ah, but it was a very big meal and a very small dinosaur. Oh, thought you were one of your big brothers. You're not so bad. You're not so bad. Is he implying the dinosaur got full and as it, as it walked away, he jumped up and killed it? 
I don't think, I think he's implying that the dinosaur like ate part of him and then left him for dead and then he survived. And the only part he wanted was an iron hand. Well, I think the, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he's going to imply, but the idea is that he'd come in torn all to shit, but he would come in and be like, oh my God, he's the guy from the first movie. And Spielberg said, no, that's too unrealistic. And then decided to make a one where they clone a giant dinosaur that can turn invisible. Not only did Knight personally approach Spielberg and say, look, I've got a great idea of how I could survive. It'd be a good nod to the first film. It'd be funny. And as well, I get to say that amazing line that I came up with and Spielberg's like, nah, it's too unrealistic. And unbeknownst to Knight, at that exact same time, the idea floating around for Jurassic Park 4 was human dinosaur clones. And he's like, no, but this one guy surviving a dinosaur attack from a tiny dinosaur with this huge, big, massive fat guy, it's not it's too unrealistic. But no, human dinosaur clones, that's the shit right there. We can do that. I think they should do his original idea. For the next one, Jurassic World 2 or whatever, what is it called? They, no, they're good official name on it. Jurassic Universe. Something like that. I don't even know what it is. I've not followed it. But I know they're bringing another one. They're planning on bringing Goldblum back. They should bring back all the original characters, including Knight. And they should all be people who are basically on the circuit of books just talking about dinosaurs suck. I hate dinosaurs. They're all terrible. And they all get called in to like go bomb the island. So when you watch the sequel to Jurassic World, remember that there could have been a scene in it where a hook-handed, eye-patch-wearing Wayne Knight walked in and backhanded dinosaurs endlessly, but Spielberg thought it'd be too unrealistic. Like stick! Stick, stupid! That's a stick, boy! Yeah, you like a stick? You want to get it? And no wonder you're extinct. If I remember from my last video, comments and stuff don't really matter, do they? We should be honest with the audience. Analytics-wise, likes mean nothing. We would appreciate if you did because it does help us. Definitely like the video because that helps us know if people enjoy the actual content we're putting out. And I guess subscribe if you want to see me shit on more movies and talk about awesome dinosaur stuff. So it doesn't help us analytics wise, but it does help this guy and which tangentially helps me because it means he stops annoying me. Because <laughs> when I don't say this, he gets really upset. I get messaged on Facebook. So I'm a busy guy, I've got shit to do. I don't need to deal with that. Come on, help me out. I just told you a story about a dinosaur. At least you can do. So, Jurassic World. What a disappointment. Me and my dad love dinosaurs. We went to watch that movie and we both walked out of the cinema on the first day it was released, just going, it was all right that, wasn't it? And I rewatched it again yesterday and I noticed that it's, it's just terrible. Right, I'm not even gonna go into all the, like, the, all the dinosaurs, the CGI, like the stupid thing about Wayne High Heels, like objectively, all the people in that movie are terrible. Do you know, like the, the lead lady? I don't know what her name is. I forget the name of the actress. I don't care. Because she is the most objectively terrible human being to have ever been in a Jurassic Park movie. There is a scene in that movie during the Indominus Rex escapes and it disappears. And it's on the island and it's running towards about, I think they say it's four miles away from the nearest attraction. Which for a dinosaur that can run at 40 miles an hour, He's not that far away. Chris Pratt walks into the command center, which for some reason has no security. He only gets asked for ID when he walks in, which means anyone can just walk into that security. And that happens again later in the movie. Vincent D'Onofrio, he walks in, and then the same security goes, well, you're not supposed to be in here. Why are you outside? But again, I digress. Chris Pratt says, when he hears that these dinosaurs escape, says, well, you need, to you need to evacuate the park right now. And the lady says, and I quote, we'd never reopen. That right there, she's the villain. She is protecting the company's bottom line above the lives of the people in that park. And what happens later in the film? The Indominus Rex breaks into the pterodactyl enclosure, they all escape, and it attacks Main Street, which is still full of people, which would have been, at the very least, indoors in that giant warehouse that's safe, if not being for that woman just saying, no, we never reopen. At the end of the film, it shows her walking away arm in arm with Chris Pratt. She's surrounded by crying, injured children, and there is a room full of witnesses that will be able to corroborate that when Chris Pratt, their self-appointed expert on dinosaurs and dinosaur behavior told her, evacuate the park, and she said, in front of witnesses, we'd never reopen. You're gonna be in front of a tribunal Monday morning, love. <laughs> you, have, you are directly responsible for every death and injury that has occurred, except for the ones, obviously, the park employees who were the dinosaur hunters who went to get it. Everyone who was injured by one of those pterodactyls is gonna sue you in a class action lawsuit. When did you learn that the Indominus Rex had escaped well about 45 minutes before everything happened oh and did did it not occur to you to warn customers to at the very least get indoors because it was heading towards the pterodactyl enclosure no did anyone advise you to do this 
well, yeah, Chris Pratt, the guy we've got as our expert on raptors, said, please do that. It's paramount that you protect human lives. And what did you say? Oh, I was more worried about the company not making profits. She's going to jail. Do you remember how much the Indominus Rex cost? Do you think they, the fact they refused to blow it like Chris Pratt says, you've got a rocket launcher in storage. Go blow this thing the fuck up and build another one. And they say, no. And do you know how much it costs? That represents a $26 million investment. That's fucking nothing. A company like that can write that off in profits they'd make in a week. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio says they sell $7 sodas. If you look at that scene with all those people on Main Street, imagine how much money they're making. All those shops. It's on a private island where people have to stop to stay in their hotel and get across using their ferry. Like, it's sponsored by Verizon or something like that. It's like, well, tell Verizon, we're blowing this dinosaur up. It's set back research. We've got to build another one. What the fuck is anyone going to do? Like, well, I guess we'll go to that other dinosaur amusement park and sponsor one of their new dinosaurs. <laughs> so, no, we blew it up. We're making another one. Oh, oh okay. Um, can we sponsor the next one? Yes, and we'll give you some money back. We'll give you out the profits of all the sodas that we sell. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that company behind the scenes owns some very valuable patents. If you can create life and you can genetically tinker with dinosaurs and you can splice in all the crazy bullshit they do, that's not a lot of money. Another thing, Vincent D'Onofrio's character, let's weaponize velociraptors. No. And all throughout the film he says, oh man, imagine if we'd had these in war. Because what you mean these things that take like five years to train to listen to basic commands and even then barely listen to the only person who supposedly is in charge. Let's release the raptors to hunt down the Indominus Rex. Within 30 seconds of him releasing the raptors, the Indominus Rex takes command because it's the new alpha. So five years of bonding from birth with Chris Pratt is immediately overridden by a bigger dinosaur. What a great thing. That would obviously, that would obviously so easily replace a predator drone. <laughs> I understand that no one's gonna mess with an army that has dinosaurs, that's great. But when you look, you think it's, they cost millions of dollars to make, they take years to train, and even then, they only obey the most basic commands. And even Chris Pratt even says, don't turn your back on them ever, while he's got his back to the cage, I should add. <laughs> Meaning that at any point, those dinosaurs, like each even shows him, the second he turns his back and jives back under the cage, they immediately try and attack him. So like Vincent D'Onofrio should see that and go, wow, so this is the guy who's supposedly the leader of their pack. Yeah, and they turned on him within a second of him turning around and they were gonna eat him if he did not be in that cage. Yeah, hmm, these seem like a valuable asset for warfare, something that you can't rely on and will immediately turn, it, and will immediately turn on you the second you turn your back. So if I was a soldier, I'd much rather go into a cave and look for an insurgent than say, all right, you're on raptor patrol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean me and five raptors? Yeah, if one turns on you, shoot it. But remember, it's worth more than you, and if it dies, we're coming out of your paycheck. Throughout that movie, there's only one dinosaur that proves, above all, that it's the best one, and that's the Mosasaurus. That leaps out over the small... The cage that's like this... Yeah. The fence that's this high, which means that at any point while that park was open, it could have done that and just grabbed, like, a family of four. Yeah, we've got the greatest um, structural engineers who designed the fences. And the one around the most, the biggest, most dangerous dinosaur in the park is like this tall. And it sh proves at the end of the film, you can just jump over it at any time it wants. And I like as well when, um, towards the end of the movie, Vincent D'Onofrio calls in his like soldiers for InGen. And one of them, to establish that he's a bad guy, shoots a, uh, a pterodactyl as he's flying along and it falls into the ocean. Like, oh no, what a bad guy, he shot that dinosaur, he killed it. That scene immediately follows the one of all the pterodactyls swooping down and grabbing children and taking them into the sky. Because, yeah, he's a bad guy for killing those dinosaurs that I've just, we've just seen on screen in this CGI clusterfuck just mauling people to death. What a fucking terrible movie.